Hello! My name is Attorney Damian DeNoble and you're watching the Frontier on Labor YouTube channel. This is the first video of five on the H-2B visa process for 2024-2025. It's the ultimate guide and it's meant to be paired with the book that you can find in the carousel below, the ebook, the free ebook, the H-2B 2024-2025 ultimate guide. And hopefully as we add more videos, there'll be other ebooks in that carousel. If at any point you want a consultation, frontiertech.com slash consultation, and you can talk to me or somebody in the office, maybe Noreen Dillon, if you're wanting to talk about uh, bringing Filipinos in from outside of the U.S. I want to give you an overview of the H-2B visa process and just highlight what it looks like in 2024, 2025. This is meant to be a brief video because I'm going to take each of the sections that we do and I'm going to go in depth. You're kind of going to get a tour of the office, you know? in this series. So that's exciting. You'll get to know me. That's exciting. And uh, most of all, you should leave a little more educated, especially if you partner it with the guide at the bottom of this video. What is the H-2B visa process? H-2B visas are for temporary or seasonal workers that come to the United States to perform a particular task in a particular occupation in a particular area of intended employment. And what it requires is for an employer who wishes to employ these H-2B visa workers to go through a three-part process. Number one, they need to certify that they have a bona fide job and that they're a bona fide employer, and this is done through the Department of Labor. Number two, they need to apply for a visa with the USCIS. And number three, with that visa in hand, they need to actually have recruited and uh, gotten that visa to workers who then go through the US consulates to enter the country or who transition from other employers to this new place of employment via a, um, a visa change of employer petition, all of which is done on Form I-129 at USCIS. So I just want to highlight this process, okay? So there are two main filing periods for April 1 starters and January 1 starters, but as we'll see when we talk about the statement of need, there's actually about five key filing periods for January 1 starters, for February 1 through 15 starters, for April, uh, excuse me, for April 1 starters, for uh, May 15 starters, for May 15 through September 30th starters, for October 1 through November 15 starters thereabouts, and for February 1 through February 15 starters, okay? And the reason for each of these starting points is varied. We don't have to get into it, but essentially uh, it allows for employers who have seasonal need or peak load need to start when they need to start. Not everyone's gonna have a perfectly aligned business where their season just happens to begin on April 1st and just happens to end in October, or just happens to begin on October 1st and happens to end in July. In reality, starts are throughout the year. But that being said, outside of the April 1 and October 1 cycles, which are the main cycles, you need to know some special rules. You need to know what a new worker is, what a returning worker is, uh, what a worker from a special country is, okay? The whole process, really from soup to nuts, uh, takes about six months. And this is because the first step, the prevailing wage, should be filed about 45 to 60 days at least um, outside of when you need to file step two, which is the statement of need, 9142, with the Department of Labor. So let's say you're filing for an April 1st start date, which is when most, the vast majority of people in this uh, cycle file. Your prevailing wage should be filed around September, October, mid-October, maybe mid-November at the very, very latest. You'll be filing between January 1st and 3rd for your April 1st need because you need to file 90 days out. And then you'll be going through what's called the lottery, which we talk about in video three of the series. And once you get through the lottery and have your place, you'll get a first action if you're in group A sometime in January. You'll go into recruiting sometime in early February. You'll get your certification mid to late February, and you'll be applying for workers to come in on April 1st. So about six months. You have to hit deadlines. You have to get all your documents in order. You have to kind of keep your head on a swivel because you're going through three different departments, Department of Labor, Department of Homeland Security, which is where USCIS is, and the Department of State where US consulates are. And you even have to, you know, if, if you're, don't know who your workers are, you have to find a way to recruit them, whether that's partnering with a recruiting agency or doing it yourself. In general, uh, the most strategic portion starts right with the prevailing wage. You need to kind of have a really good idea of what you're doing right at that first step, six months out. Uh, the most difficult kind of portion to nail everything, get everything right, is the Department of Labor Statement of Need. The government really wants to know you're certified. Uh, the most unpredictable portion is the consular portion because um, your workers can have all sorts of backgrounds that you're not aware of. 
And the most annoying portion is the USCIS because of the fee structure, which I go into in um, video three, uh, or rather we, video four of the series. We talk about consulates in video five, prevailing wage video two, and the Department of Labor in video three. Overall, it's because you're going through three agencies, because you need to think about recruiting, the H2B is the most complicated kind of annual program um, that exists in the United States. Um, you shouldn't assume anything. Depending on when you need your workers, what kind of workers you need, where they need to be coming from, you're gonna probably have a very specific window that you fit in. For example, if you're a worker and if you're, um, let's say a business in Northern Maine or Alaska, and your hotel doesn't open until May, you probably shouldn't apply for an April 1st start date and you need to apply for something called returning workers on May 15th. Returning workers are those workers who have had, had an H2B visa within the past three years. If you are a uh, business that just needs one worker for a very special project over a two year period, you shouldn't be thinking about seasonal or peak load applications at all. You should be thinking about a one-time application and you should be looking at all the potential filing dates that probably minimize your exposure to the lottery. If you are a worker in, let's say, the weld, uh, uh, business in the welding trades, you probably need to be looking at peak load applications because you probably have a peak load of work at some point during the year, but where you apply is gonna be heavily dependent on your payrolls and revenues and your contracts and letters of intent. So it's not one size fits all. The program was originally designed in the late 1980s as a sort of uh, redheaded stepchild uh, of the entire uh, uh, ABCDs of immigration and it was meant for landscapers. It was heavily contested by uh, US labor unions because they thought it would attack the construction industry. And it was also then incorporated to include like uh, fish factory, uh, fish factories and, and, and fish production. It has expanded in those years and uh, it's really not uh, an easy system for anybody but landscapers and folks in the, in the fishing industries. You need to plan, you need to know what you're doing and you need to be very, very, very concerned with the dates uh, that you need to enter. So if you're thinking about it, you should definitely talk to somebody earlier rather than later. We're gonna go through each of these parts in the following series. There's an H2B uh, ebook, 2024, The Ultimate Guide, that gives you some FAQ questions and answers, uh, that gives you some observations that I've seen in the program, how it's changed over the past few years, and I hope you enjoy it. And again, if you want a consultation, you can reach out to me at frontiertech.com slash consultation. Okay, so thanks so much for being here and I hope you enjoy the series.